So kia ora, ko Lisa Aho, um, from the University of Otago, um, Otako Whakaho Waka, um, and Koichi from Victoria University. So this is a really good segue, whoever organised this, thank you very much. A um, really great segue from Bryony's talk. Um, so Koichi and I are here representing actually um, um, a group that um, ended up being part of the Consul project. So we're here to talk about the open access toolkit uh, that we were involved in. So we're talking on behalf of actually our ROPU. Um, so we weren't the only ones and can't take all the credit uh, for this talk. Um, so as Bryony um, has already said, uh, Consul with the Council of New Zealand um, University Libraries uh, decided that they needed to work a bit more in the space. And so they were really gracious and they created actually a project um, group, the OA toolkit. Um, so we're really grateful um, for that opportunity. Um, and th through the sponsorship, um, next slide please, Kwechi. They yeah. actually um, allowed two people to dedicate their time um, to this particular project. So um, Barrett and Rachel couldn't be here today. So you've got Kwechi and I. Um, so they were the project leads. So they actually had some dedicated time um, to coordinate this group um, and work on this project. So we're really grateful, um, A, for Consul support, but also to have Barrett and Rachel leading the way um, on this project. So um, a big kudos to them. Um, so there's 10 people in our group. So there was 10 librarians um, and that was intentional. They really wanted a representational group um, from across uh, the motu, so across the country, um, which was really great opportunity for us to be able to collaborate with each other um, and get input uh, from each of the libraries. So um, it was a really great uh, group to be involved in. Um, and as Bryony really suggested um, as well, the project oversight, so Kim um, from AUT and Michelle from Waikato, uh, they were our go-to people. So um, Barrett and Rachel could go and ask them questions and seek advice and clarification from them um, as needed. So um, it was a really well-organized um, and well-structured project. Um, so just wanted to say thank you to all of those people um, for their part in this particular group. Um, so we started uh, May in 2023. So it seems that that was a date a long time ago, but that went by very quickly. So we had a first meeting in May. Um, so once we had um, the groups of people representing um, each institution, and we decided that it would be best to meet every two weeks. Um, and of course, given our geographical location spread throughout the country um, and not being able to um, easily fly around the country, we decided that we would be meeting face to face, uh, wouldn't be meeting face to face, and we're meeting online. Um, and I'll talk um, a little bit about sort of our process and, and then I'll um, hand over to Koichi and he can show you um, a little bit more about the end product. Um, so, of course, um, yeah, we met every two weeks and we had a really tight deadline. Um, so we decided that um, December, or Consul decided that they wanted to have a quick turnaround time. And so December um, was our deadline. And I'm pleased to say that we actually met that deadline um, successfully and it went live um, in early this year. Um, so how did we do it? How did we meet? So again, um, we discovered that not everybody has teams in the institutions. Um, we were having to meet um, online. So how do we collaborate um, in you know, using various tools? Um, the whole concept behind open was not lost on us. So we wanted to obviously create an open tool. Um, so therefore we needed to create, also have access to tools that all institutions had. Um, so Barrett discovered that Miro and um, Canva, which Koichi will talk about, so chose Canva um, as the platform to create the actual toolkit on. Um, and we used Miro, Miro as a way of collaborating. So what we did, um, we shared all of our resources. So we wanted to see what people were doing. We didn't really want to have to start from scratch. Um, we knew that there was already a lot of great resources out there that people had already started working on um, and had already created from postgrad workshops to websites, um, to pamphlets, et cetera. So we didn't start from scratch, but we collated all of our resources together um, and shared and picked and, and chose things from there, which is really great. Um, and also from there, we identified the gaps um, and the needs with conversations with academics, um, early career researchers, other librarians um, of what we needed um, potentially um, to fulfill these gaps. So it was a really great to be able to actually share resources um, with each other. And so we've got an example of what our Miro board looked like. Many of us hadn't used this before, um, and I personally thought it was really helpful. So um, we had um, each topic 
Um, we had different topics. We had our plan of action. We had our terms of reference. Um, we had all of our contact details on here. So it was just this one place to look at. Uh, we had homework to do. So we met every two weeks, but we had homework. If we couldn't make the meeting, um, we filled in some sticky notes on here. So hopefully you can see, it's quite tiny, but hopefully you can see um, we had some color coordinated sticky notes. So um, it was really easy for Barrett and Rachel to actually see um, who made what comment, who was sharing what documents, um, and who agreed with statements. So we could actually put up um, a sticky note and then other people could also tag in and say they agree um, as well. So it was a really good way um, of communicating with each other. Um, and you can see some examples of the different topics and the different resources that we had, the gaps that, that each university had. Um, so it was all in one place um, and it was a really great way of communicating if you couldn't make the meetings um, or you wanted to share something. Um, and we also, um, this is an example of you know, using the Miro board, making some comments, um, and then you can see um, on the other side of the screen there, stage two, there's an example of the actual um, toolkit that was created and how we could also feed into that and add suggestions. Um, we added our sticky notes in there, we added some little um, icons in there as well. So it was a really great way of being able to communicate um, with each other. Uh, but Kalich is going to show you um, more about the actual toolkit in a second. Um, so last slide for me. So of course, um, the project did come with some lim limitations. So we decided early on um, that, of course, journals is really po you know popular open access. People think of journals, um, but we're quite conscious that there's other open access. You know, we would like books, book chapters. But we decided that was actually quite a big part of the process. Um, so we decided that we would actually focus on the journals, um, how to publish open access journals, with the idea that people could adapt this to um, other, other resources as well. So that's something that people can work on down the track. Um, again, as I identified before, all the universities are on different platforms and systems. Not everybody had Teams. Not everybody uses Zoom. Not everybody uses um, has access to uh different um, editing, video software, et cetera. So we were really conscious that we wanted to make something that was open and accessible to all. Um, and that meant obviously using something um, that was open, which is why we went with Canva and Miro. Uh, really early on, everybody was really enthusiastic about signing up to this um, Ropu and joining in, but then quite quickly um, other work took over. Um, and so the different levels of capacity became a challenge, but having the Miro board and being able to communicate on uh, like that was really helpful. Um, so we could go away and do our homework and talk to academics and talk to our colleagues and come back um, and use the Miro board. But um, it actually ended up being um, a core group of four people who actually created uh, the actual toolkit um, with us, the, the rest of us having some input and sharing ideas. Um, so thank you to those four who actually did create the Canva because they did a lot of the hard slog. Um, and of course, re research is incredibly time poor. So the whole idea of this toolkit is they can dip in and out of things, they can grab things at their leisure. Um, and we've made um, different versions as well for people that they can online, they can also print it off, etc. So we will talk about that shortly. Um, and also just to, we point to note that um, out of scope, we decided that rights, rights retention and research data management need a whole toolkit for themselves. It's a whole other conversation. So uh, we decided very early on that those were out of scope. Um, but again, the idea of the toolkit is that things can get added in um, and universities, anybody in the world can add um, extra content at their leisure. So we decided that we'd focus on journals um, and those other ones would be um, out of scope. Uh, so yes, I'll hand over to Koichi now and he can carry on and show you some more exciting parts of the toolkit. Kia ora Lisa, uh, kia, uh, kia ora na, uh, uh, my name is Koichi Noe. Um, in this part of the presentation, I'm going to show you what we created uh, in more depth and then also um, how you can possibly adopt this toolkit. So uh, it's um, in uh, just it's an, an infographic guide to publishing open access with an out area New Zealand specific context and pa perspective like five stages of publishing. So research cycle, uh, it, it, there are many ways to divide the cycle, but we wanted to sort of like uh, make it simple and then stick with just five stages which is planning and choosing a journal and submitting manuscript after, after acceptance and post-publication. 
Normally, we receive queries from researchers at one of these stages. <clears throat> so that's why we went for this. And it's a digital templates to other institutions, yeah, universities and current uh, research institutes, and the center can customize it. <clears throat> so we want as many people as possible to adopt this resource. And it's openly available under CC by um, share like license and hosted by Open Access Australasia. <clears throat> and uh, this is just like icing on the cake, but like while we are working on this project, we noticed that uh, the biggest funder in New Zealand, Minister of Business in in Innovation and Enterprise, um, doesn't have their uh, re research funding policy uh, indexed by Sherpa. Uh, services. So we contact the Sherpa, we contact MB, and then now it's <clears throat> all indexed. So, and this is a draft template. We worked on a few drafts, and then, yeah, everybody uh, had opinions, and we, you know, we tried to incorporate all, all the other opinions, but we wanted to basically um, create a resource that is self explanatory, something easy to understand from a researcher's point of view. So it provides a high level overview of the things researchers need to know and consider at each stage and links out to high quality supporting resources if researchers want more in-depth information and it enables institutions to insert branding and links to proprietary unique supporting contents and resources. So that, that's the bare bone of the uh, template. At the top, you see a chat or some sort of infographic. And then to the uh, left bottom, you get some of the pro tips from Susan's librarians. And then at the end, uh, you'll see checklist. So these researchers can just tick, 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 and then move on. <clears throat> Um, so uh, thanks to Open Access Australasia, they agreed to um, host our resource. Um, everyone here know probably know how to get to this uh, page, but like uh, I'll just uh, uh, put the link in there. I'll just move on to the live site. Okay. So uh, um, yeah, once you get to Open Access Australasia, you can download uh, our templates, and then this is the page. Um, so first, that you can download institution neutral infographic version. We have we created two versions, by the way. One for uh, just the infographic one. The other one is uh, um, screen reader friendly version. So if anyone has a uh, <laughs> um, trouble reading on screen, uh, they, they can just download this version as well. And the, the ones I'm going to show you today is more um, the templates for uh, specific institutions. So you can just customize uh, on Canva and what potentially. Uh, it looks like, um, yeah, this. So you have to have a, um, a Canva um, account. It's a freemium account. So you can just create it for free. And once you create it and you click and then download it like this. <clears throat> I'll just make it a bit um, bigger. So it, it, should, it, it, it hopefully you're looking at this uh, on the camera. But anyhow, um, this is basically the, the template uh, for uh, different institutions. As you can see, red parts, um, you can change it. So you can insert branding here and you can also add um, you know, uh, it's, it's just specific resources in these like red links. I'll just explain how it, it's, it's, well, it's kind of self-explanatory, but I'll explain um, how it's laid out. So at the top, you see this like a chat or infographic at the top boxes. In the top boxes, we ask questions. We ask researchers questions that you need, they need, they need to consider. For example, does your institution require to make your published outputs open? And then if the person doesn't know the answer, they can move down and then we uh, direct them to the resource that, can, that should answer their, their, these questions. And then yes, uh, there are case by case cases and if they need it further support, if you, they can further go further down and then they'll find the support services across the university. <laughs> 
And then uh, these tips and tricks, this is the pro tips fun. Uh, they, uh, not all the researchers do not have to consider all these tips, but um, in many cases, you know, we received queries again and again about these ones. So like we might as well just, you know, share the answers up front. So some funders require you to preset your research plan before you begin collecting data, that sort of thing. Uh, it depends on the discipline uh, where research is working in, but yes, we just keep these tips. And checklists, you can see, um, these are all, the, these uh, uh, checklists are related to the uh, infographic at the top. So um, if they haven't done this, <laughs> they can go back to uh, uh, relevant uh, questions. And then they can move on <clears throat> and or they can just wait till the next stage comes around. <clears throat> so going back to um, oh yeah, sorry, I was gonna just show you quickly uh, this accessible version, uh, more a uh, screen reader um, friendly version. Basically uh, we took out all the images and then uh, added the text so that you know they can just read aloud, <clears throat> use the read aloud application. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you how we at the Victoria University of Wellington, the Herring of Waka, adopted the resource. Oh, yeah. before that, I move on to that. I should thank Janet uh, Catterall. Um, she kindly uh, pulled out um, usage that's from um, Open Access Australasia. Uh, website last month and so the top one is of course is the landing page and the second one is our open access toolkit so it's uh, we are so grateful that they uh, you know uh, kind of hosted our resource and it's reaching uh, a far bigger audience uh, we could imagine <clears throat> so um, as you can see um, at our university we didn't change much we just you know, inserted the branding and then inserted the uh, institution specific resources into that. And we kept all the, uh, the graphics and then, well, icons like, uh, uh, by the way, we use all the New Zealand native birds. <laughs> so if you, well, you probably recognize Kiwi bird, but the Kereru, Tui, Piwaka Waka sort of scattered around on the page. <clears throat> And this is the example from University of Waikato. They went a much uh, longer way. It's like uh, they well, changed it from portrait to horizontal, and then they changed the color scheme. They kept some native buzz. Uh, what happened to kiwi buzz? But I don't know. I see uh, pi waka waka and tui there. <clears throat> uh, the contents are similar. Uh, they, of course, uh, inserted uh, their uh uh, resources that are specific to the at the university, but it looks beautiful. Uh, big shout out to them. <clears throat> and next one is uh, from uh, Charles Church University. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong of you know uh, just like downloading and you know um, keep it simple. Basically, um, this is one way of doing that. Um, if you are working for Australian institution, you might want to add some uh, Australian native species. Uh, my personal favorite is wombat, but you know we can just add crocodiles or kangaroos, or whatever. <laughs> so uh, this is the use case. Um, we are using this tool uh, to raise awareness among researchers about open access publishing. So that's their goal. And then uh, we all know that the researchers are time poor, so you want you, you want to um, make a tool that is basically. Um, it's a self service tool. So you, I'm, we make it um, available on library guides so they can download it and then they can consult the resource at the point of need. Also, uh, we host uh, many uh, sort of like open access publishing workshops and then we uh, uh, print them out in color and looking, make it look pretty and then hand them out at the workshops. <clears throat> And also, um, when we receive queries, publishing uh, related queries from researchers, uh, we of course answer those questions, but also um, for future reference, you could use this toolkit and then we just attach it as a file. So that's how we've been using so far. And then that's pretty much all from me.